Hi, welcome to my video where today we're going to talk about the most introductory topic in Algebra 1. It's just simply variables and expressions. So I'm going to guide you through some vocabulary terms that we need to know, and then we're going to do some translation from algebraic terms to um, verbal terms and vice versa. So let's see where we go with this. First thing, the definition of a variable is a symbol used to express numbers or variables. So a variable can be any letter in the world. It could be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way through Z. It could be any of those letters. And that letter stands for an unknown value, something we don't know. So if I said I wanted to go to the store and buy X apples, X is the number. I just don't know exactly what that number is. An algebraic expression is one or more numbers and variables with one or more operations. So an algebraic expression would be that if I had, let's say, 3x, so 3 times x, plus 4. It's numbers, it's variables, it's more one or more operations, 3 times x, and then plus 4. So I have two operations going on there. It can be, be a complete mix of any of that. Okay, now, when we start translating, we have to know the four flipping words. The four flipping words are from, into, then, and to. Now, the flipping words, these four words, are the words that if we see them in an expression, it's going to tell us to flip the values across the plus or minus sign. Okay, so if I said to you from, Think about when you would hear the word from. You would say 3 is subtracted from 10. Now think about that order. If I say 3 is subtracted from 10, then that would really mean 10 minus 3. The 10 and the 3 would get flipped. If I said 2 is being subtracted from 7, that would mean 7 minus 2. Okay, So from that makes you flip. Into. Into is about division. If I said 3 gets divided into 15, think about that. 3 divided into 15 really means 15 divided by 3. So into is another one of those words where if you see it, you actually flip your values. Than. Than usually goes with less. So if I'm subtracting something and I say that 5 less than 8. If I say 5 less than 8, I'm really saying 8 minus 5, okay? So 5 less than 8 would be 8 minus 5. And then 2. If I say added 2, so if I say 2 is added to 5, that really means 5 plus 2. If I say 5 is added to 10, that's really saying 10 plus 5. So those are my four flipping words, from, into, then, and to. Now, a couple other terminology things that we need to make sure we know for sure is a factor times a factor is a product, okay? Factors multiply to get the result, which is called the product. And if we see this, this is read as x to the nth power. So if I have x and then a little 4 here, that would be x to the fourth power, where x is the base and n is the exponent, okay? x is the base and n is the exponent. Okay, we're gonna translate some phrases here. We're gonna translate them from algebraic to verbal and then verbal to algebraic. So there's so many different answers we could have here. What I'm gonna show you today are just really basic examples, but there's, again, so many different ways that we can translate them. So I'll say as many of them as I can think right now, and then if you have something you're unsure of, feel free to comment below and ask me a question. So this first one, if I wanted to translate this into a verbal expression, so actually put the words out there, this could possibly be the sum, because remember, sum means the answer to addition problem, of m and 5. I could also say m plus 5. I could say 5 added to m. I could say m added by five, um, m increased by five, those would all be great responses. The next one, d less than seven. Now, what I need us to note is that d less than seven, than, I'm going to highlight that word than. Than is one of those flipping words. A flipping word, when you see it, from, into, then, to, is going to tell us that we have to flip 
the values in front and behind it. So if I have D less than seven, D less than seven actually means seven minus D. Now, if that's confusing to you, imagine D was three. Imagine you had money and I said, I have three less than $7. Okay, so imagine for a moment D was three. If I say to you three less than seven, three less than seven means you would do seven minus three and you would have $4. Well, look at this expression now. That's what it's showing, seven minus D. So seven minus that three. Okay, let's try the next one. Now, the most basic way we could possibly say this expression here would just simply be 13 plus two times X. That's probably the most basic, 13 plus two times X. But think about it, there's so many other ways that I could say things, okay? I could say, 13 added by 2 multiplied by x. I could say the sum of 13 and twice x. Remember the word twice means to multiply something by 2. So you definitely have quite a few options. Here's what I wrote. 13 increased by twice a number. That's just one of the many, many different ways I could translate it. What if I gave you the product of 8 and the cube of b? Okay, the product of A and the cube of B. Now, what operation does product mean? It means multiplication. So I have to multiply A and the cube of B. Now, cube is about powers. Squared is the second power. Cubed is the third power. So the product of A and the cube of B would simply be 8B cubed. Now, when I do this problem in my class with my students, often students will be so used to using an X for multiplication or they'll want to put values in parentheses. You don't need it. Remember, when you have values that are side by side, side by side means multiply. So I don't need any raised dot. I definitely don't need a multiplication X and I don't even need parentheses. If you're thinking about that, just get rid of it completely. This is all you need. 8B cubed. Okay. If I wanted to give the most basic representation of this expression, I would say one half P, okay? Or I could say one half times P, or the product of one half and P. Then I could say minus six. I could say subtracted by six. I could say less six. Let's see what I wrote. One half P decreased by six. Any of those would be totally, totally good. Okay, last one here. 4 times the sum of x and 3. Now, when you have 4 times an, enti an entire sum, or if it says 4 times the difference, so 4 times the sum or times the difference, that means I have to do 4 times the entire amount. Now, this entire amount says x plus 3. So if I have to do 4 times the entire amount of x plus 3, not just the x, not just the 3, but the whole thing, what do you think I need to use here? If you said parentheses, you're correct. This would be four times, open parentheses, x plus three. This is four times this sum. Now imagine that the four times the sum didn't even exist. It just said the sum of x and three. If it just said the sum of x and three, it would be x plus three. But now I'm doing four times that entire amount, and this is exactly what it would look like. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I, hopeful it was, I hope it was helpful for you as this introductory lesson into variables and expressions. Check out my other videos for more information.